That's a... Who's that? Uh, Peter Molyneux? Peter Molyneux is the guy in charge of the Fable series. Uh, also Goddess, or Godus, if any of you guys remember that travesty. Or, I guess most recently, Godus Wars, or Goddess Wars, or... I don't know. Um, he is... I'm not exactly going to call him a charlatan, but he's a, he's a guy that has bigger dreams than he has the capacity to deliver. And will continuously, you know, just promise anything as long as nobody tells him no. Uh, and nobody ever seemed to tell him no? You know, he had like a weird Minecraft cube thing where you were effectively like crowd crowdfunding his next game by digging through a cube, which was really interesting. But that was to crowdfund Goddess or Godus or whatever. And like he did do some he did make some great games. Like the Fable series were pretty good. And you know, when it comes down to it, uh well, let's see. I guess let's just go hang out in bed until I heal a full. Uh you know the Fable series was pretty good. I know some people are disappointed by Fable 3, but eh, it seemed okay to me. Um, you know, Black and White were fantastic games. And eh, it takes a lot to heal. The Goddess de debacle is still not out of 1.0, or it's still not out of Alpha. Yeah, and it probably never will be. I'm assuming that some at some point it's just going to go full vaporware. I'm assuming it hasn't even, like, received any major updates in ages. Okay, let's... let's switch the... Grab this prayer. I need... I need more faith. Oh, candles. Admittedly, I only have, like, a handful, but... whatever. I only have a handful of candles. Even, uh, fill up. In fact, I actually barely have any. Okay. Exactly 100 faith. As far as I know, the last update to Goddess was when they announced Goddess Wars. Why? See, Dungeon Keeper is still one of your favorite games of all time. Was that specifically Molyneux? If so, I guess that's... That's kind of cool. I don't know. I sometimes it feels like ga guys like that were better off back in the days of like extreme te technological limitations and very very small teams. Um, I was watching uh, Matt McMuscle's video on Duke Nukem Forever earlier today, and it reminded me of uh, some guys I knew in college um, who they're. They wanted to be game designers in kind of the worst way. They had these big ideas on what games should be like and how they should be made and stuff. But they didn't actually have like a good idea of how to bring them about without making them utter garbage. Okay, that was Bullfrog. See, it's before my time, unfortunately. Uh, well, I'd say before my time, but I straight up just like wasn't that big into gaming at the time. Um... But so, like, I had one guy, I did a game jam, and we actually had to not yell at him, but uh, we we had to force him to actually do work, because effectively his entire, his entire, like, goal-ish was to tell us what to do. And so he would, he would sit there on the couch, you know, plinking away at some mini-game. Because he needed to do something for the game jam. You know, we we weren't going to just let him sit around and do nothing. So he had he had to work on programming something. So he he was like, well, let's add mini games. And mind you, this is a game jam. You don't do mini games on g game jams. The game is a mini game. Um, let's see, is it possible to upgrade the church more? I don't think so. I think I'm at maximum cathedralage. Hey, welcome back, Ravikant. Thank you for the bits. How was life? How was work? Uh, let's see. But yeah, so we had to like more or less strong arm him into even like putting any amount of work into the project because 
What he wanted to do was sit there and tell the rest of us what to do instead, even though he was the most junior developer uh, on the team. And uh, so I asked him about it one day, and he's like, I want to be the idea guy, you know, when making games. You know, I, I want to come up with the idea and have other people make the game for me. And I feel like Molyneux has always been one of those people. Um, you know, in the games industry, the guy that, you know, has multiple big dreams, and some of them are pretty good. Like, the idea of Goddess is amazing. Uh, sort of, but it has to be made by a completely different person to actually, like, succeed, because Molyneux just wasn't good enough. And, you know, it's it's too big of a dream for, uh, you know, modern studios and tech and whatever. Uh, same thing with, like, Fable, you know, the old, like, every decision matters thing. Like, that, that's a, that's a bold face lie. Especially something to tell back in the days of the Xbox. Like, that, nothing you do in a video game matters, ultimately. You know, no matter what, generally endings in a video game are gonna just end up in that awkward state of, you know, one of three or five endings. Like, Prey made it so that every decision mattered, but only gave you a set number of choices. It wasn't like, you know, s walking past somebody that wanted to talk to you would make them suddenly have, like, a blood vendetta against you. Like, someday we'll get games that are that deep, but it's gonna be a long time before we actually get there. Very long time indeed. And, you know, budgets are going to be much... Well, I'm not gonna say budgets are gonna be higher. What's probably gonna happen is actually, uh... Let's see, I need lenses. I need polishing paste for lenses. Where do I make polishing paste again? I forget. I feel like I go through this every single time. Oh wait, no, there it is. It's just right here. I should probably go buy some more seed oil. Um, but like right now, most of game developers' budgets go into two things. Marketing and graphics. Uh just because the amount of time and effort into actual graphics. Well, maybe? I don't know. You have to spend quite a lot on graphics in, like, anything nowadays. And so, like, ten years from now, either we're gonna hit this plateau where you really can't make games look better, or we're gonna start getting into really insane stuff and it'll get even more expensive. I don't know. Um, but if we can get to the point where it's not terribly expensive uh, to do, like, visual design in a game, Yeah, you're gonna need some sort of AI to manage all that wonder. Uh, machine learning could do it, eventually. Probably not, but... Like, designing a game that deep is going to take a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort and a lot of resources. And, you know, back on the Xbox days, hell no. Even today, that would be a little bit much. So, would you rather play a game with good graphics and a bad story, a game with bad graphics and the best storyline of all times? Depends on the graphics. Um... So, what's a good example? Make the lenses. So, I think part of it is, like, it's rare to find a game with really bad graphics and a good story. Uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, there are a couple of them, but, like, what's a good example? Project Warlock ostensibly is not a nice-looking game. But it was really fun, because they had, like, a cohesive style and they stuck with it. Uh, so, I actually, I'm not sure if I would believe, uh, you know, that you would ever get a game with the best story ever and bad graphics. I'm, but anyway, uh, I'd still rather have the game with the better story than the good graphics. Like, God of War was a, a feast for the eyes, but if it looked worse... I don't think I would have minded that much. Oberdin. Oberdin is beautiful. It, it's hideous and it's beautiful and it's a that's a weird thing to say. It hurts my eyes to look at and I will never do a series on it because I get headaches watching other people play it. But that is such a cohesive s style and an interesting uh, story that it's so easy to look past. Let's assume the graphics are Atari status. I mean, at that point, if they've managed to stick the best story ever in there, then they deserve to be, uh, fired. 
If you can have the best story ever in a video game and somehow not... Uh, and why did I put this body in here? Then again, I keep asking that question, looking at some of these. It's like, man, I really should have started embalming a long time ago. You know, in retrospect, I bet I could actually exhume some of these bodies, maybe, and use them for... Eh, nah, I don't know. But, no, like... I guess part of it is, I just doubt that that would ever happen, but I'd still generally prefer to play uh, the game with the better story most of the time. There's some exa examples where, like, I'd balk at that. So, yeah, anything Atari level, that'd be tough. Just because it'd be impossible to actually properly express a good story on that low of detail. And I think it would hurt it too much. Whereas, conversely, I've played some pretty beautiful games lately with garbage stories and actually enjoyed it. So maybe I have to take that back. I think I might go for the beauty. Um, what's an easy example? Vane. Vane was garbage. Like, it was a bad game. But it was beautiful and it was nice to look at. And I got really wrapped up in it, even though it, it wasn't a good game. So... I think really the, my answer is kind of neither. I want to I want to play games with really good styles, and those are shockingly rare. Because I'd rather have a story with amazing, amazing style. You know, the witness. The witness is timeless. Uh, what else is timeless? Journey. Journey might not have the best fidelity nowadays, but it looks great and will continue to look great for, for forever. Because when they made it, they made it to last, effectively. But yeah, yeah it truly is like a case-by-case -case situation. You can't exactly say like one way or another. Um, but I've always cared more about a cohesive style. Oh, that's a good example. How many of you guys have seen my, uh, my series on... It's called... Uh, it's Knights of Tartarus that I'm currently doing a series on. Mostly for YouTube. I actually haven't... I haven't, uh, streamed it yet. Knights of Tartarus is a fantastic game. And it looks great. For a game that is effectively just super old school pixel game. I mean obviously like the the environments could be better, you know, you could have some like better you know some of the set pieces would fit uh fit better. Hey, you want to watch more of that. Oh. Oh god, what is up with this body? I just looked at it. It's got five red um five red and a buttload of other things. Yeah, it's saying remove an uh, organ that I actually don't have the ability to remove. Well, that's fine. I'll just figure this out. Somehow. See, did I do that? Uh, it's... No, why did I do that? Well, whatever. That's not a big deal. Let's see. That's more of... Uh... Oh, Caves of Cud. But that's more gameplay and graphics. I mean, even Caves of Cud actually looks pretty nice as far as like an old ASCII game. There aren't a whole lot of old ASCII games, honestly. The Caves of Cud looks pretty good, comparatively. You want another embalming table? I could wait. Let's see, what would you think about a new Black and White 2? I actually wouldn't. I've never played any of the Black and White games. I don't really know what they're like. Uh, like I said, mildly before my time, my parents were never particularly big on buying new games. So... I... I think before I was, like, in middle school, I owned Mega Man X, Red Alert 1, Baldur's Gate 1, Smash Bros. I guess I owned a couple of N64 games. Uh, so, no. I, I did own, like, 20, 30 games, but we weren't that adventurous. You know, it was Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Smash Bros, Smash Bros Melee, uh... Pokemon Coliseum. A couple of different games with mini games and stuff like that. 
Let's see. When are you going to treat yourself and stream a playthrough of the glory that is Sonic 06? When I have a couch. I'm not even kidding. I will play through the, uh... I will absolutely play through the old Sonic game someday. Mainly, uh, so that Shell has the chance to experience them, because I think that would be hilarious. Oh. Busted again. Let's see, Sonic 06, why not Sonic Boom? I mean, I'd go through... We'd, we'd probably start at the beginning or something. Like, if I if I want to play through Sonic games, I might as well just play through the lot of them and just, just figure it out. Okay, so I did the restore injection. I didn't mean to do that. We already did silver, so we want to do gold. These are some wacky corpses. Oh, let's see, it's Man Catcher's Day. Uh, inventory is pretty clear. Let's grab what silver we've got lying around, because I I don't I really don't need this much. I don't even know what you use silver for at this point. What do you use silver for? Apart from silver powder. So silver ingots are used to make. Buh. Wait, really? Yeah, silver is really only useful for s silver nuggets. Also, we actually should be smelting these. I didn't even realize that. Okay, so let's do 20 apiece. I doubt they're going to get done today, but that's fine. Yeah, because I, I never actually ingotized them. Or I did. I've got a bunch. I've got a bunch. Never mind. Okay, craft. Boxes of vegetables. Uh Oh, yep. It's busted again. Why does it always get so broken? Eh, whatever. Let's see, when are we switching games? Oh, it's a lot later than I thought. Well, we should probably switch games after this. Like, right now-ish. We trade. Let's sell him some silver. Oh, that's some money. All right, let's buy... We've got enough. Let's buy four more jewelry, and that's probably the last jewelry we'll we're ever going to have to buy from him. Because I can go buff up the rest of the, um... I can buff up the rest of this. Let's see. Yeah, someday I might play one of the Gata... Uh, not Gata. Uh, black and white games. They just... I... I'm... Okay, so we need advanced iron parts for, I think, both of these? Yeah. Personally, I'd love it if some indie studio actually properly made uh, something. My main problem in general is, like, I really do prefer to, to cover new, like, indie games. Uh, as opposed to, like, find really, really old games uh, to play instead. Just because of not exactly the time involved. I mean, it is mildly the time involved, but... Like... It's more fun to play a game... And help out a new indie developer that is never, you know, that most people might not know about. Or that deserves, like, the attention. It's harder with an old studio that's effectively dead and defunct. Because then all that money just, that money and attention is just going to someone? I don't even know who owns Black and White at this point. Ubisoft? Maybe? Maybe? And so it's like, I would, I would rather put all of my time and energy into things that deserve it. Uh, and obviously, like, yeah, Black and White is actually probably a, a great game, and I don't want to, like, snub it. Because that's, 
you know, that's that's not fair, especially to the fans. Uh, but it's like, I I guess it's one of those where it's like I've always built my channel largely around the concept of of uh, trying to give as much attention to uh, small studios or whatever as possible. And so, usually when I go back to play old games, it's because a lot of people say voted on it or something. So, recently, we started EA Owns It. Ech. That's the other thing. EA. Let's see, can I get any more candelabra spots? It actually looks like it's only wall candelabras, so we're almost done maxing this, this church out. That's nice. It's like... I'll begrudgingly play Anthem because I hope it's going to be good. But I'm not going to be like... I generally don't go out of my way for EA games. I'll play like the indie stuff they publish. Like, I really like Un Unravel. I think Unravel's fantastic. Uh-oh. Are you done? Okay. So we're going to empty this table. Take this body, put it here. Take this body, put it on the rack. I gotta get another one of these. Unfortunately, I'm busy, so I haven't bothered with some of these. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we did actually we did actually manage to maximize this corpse. It was dodgy for a bit, but still. Okay, there we go. I guess we can actually... Is this one? That's it. It was made by Lionhead Studios. When that died, it seems like EA bought the license. Interesting. It's a shame. I I really wish Microsoft, or I really hope Microsoft, it doesn't just let the um. I mean, black and white. Also, Fable. Like I I hope they figure out some kind of future for Fable someday. I feel I feel bad because like I actually really liked Lionhead games. Maybe someday I'll sit down into a Fable series. That one ranks right up there. In terms of like games that I would like to do series on. All of them too. Uh, let's see. Let's go drop this body off. Fill it out. This Yeah, we're actually getting pretty close to uh maxing this place. Nope, stop doing that. We're getting pretty close to maxing this side out, and then we can go work on the other side. And start replacing the bodies. And then burning them. Though, again, not actually a priority here. Like, I should probably be... Prepping... Oh, the hops. The hops. Can't forget about the hops. I don't know if we're going to have enough time for the Inquisitor this week. That's a lot of nine star hops though. Maybe maybe we're good. Or not nine star, gold star hops. Yeah, I think we're good. We just gotta figure out how to make the beer. Okay. Is that Nope, we don't have any more. We could do Silver Star Hops. Yeah, let's keep doing Silver Star Hops. Because Silver Star has a chance of getting Gold gold Star Hops uh, out of it as well. Did I just plant a bunch of that in unfertilized land? I think I might have. I might be on autopilot. Whatever. I think we've got enough. Okay, this ain't hops. This is. Okay, so drop off the green stuff. We've got some gold star hops here. Drop off that. The seeds. Okay, so let's let's go see what we need to make uh, the beer. Let's see. 
The article I found isn't wrong. Then there's a new Fable title in development. It was an interview from a year ago. Huh, neat. Because I was actually really excited for the multiplayer one that they're working on. But it looks like that's right out. Okay, Mug of Beard needs hops, wheat, and water. So, water. Actually, yeah, we'll have the beer. I was worried for a second. I'm still going to have to wait a little bit on... On Snake. But that's okay. Drop the water off. Drop the hops off. Yep, that's, that's this. Here we go. So, we have nothing to burn. Grab the coal. We don't need that much. Okay. Beer! Glorious beer! And we'll have just enough to sell. Perfect. Let's get back out here. Let's see. So they said the development began while they were working on Fable Legends. I mean, that's neat. Still a shame, though. Because, like, I played Fable Legends. I was in the uh, closed beta for it, and I was super stoked because it seemed really fun. It was really pretty. And, like, I wasn't keen on the multiplayer, but I figured it would have been something fun to play with Shell or other people. Poof. That's gone. Okay, so let's go drop off the blood, the fat. How are the bodies doing? Okay. You were a good one. I'm never going to be able to switch away when playing this game. This game in Porsche. I was, I was actually planning on just finishing Porsche before I ever even considered going back to the considered going back to this, but I uh, haven't been great about that. Oh well. Anyway. Let's see, if you want puzzle, uh, good story and puzzle games, the Myst games are great. Shell actually has a full series on every Myst game, I think, yeah. Uh, so, she's actually the one that's played them. I'll play them someday. 